Sergei Markov, let's, let's just deal with practicalities. Is there any question of Russia responding to what has happened in Ukraine in any military sense? I think uh, Russia is not going uh, to be involved from a military point of view, uh, uh, but uh, of course it's possible. Uh, military exists uh, that some time to act and uh, uh, Russian military can be involved only if they will be attacked as a response. Secondly, if Russian citizens will be killed and uh, Russian uh, military uh, uh, must uh, protect uh, life uh, of uh, Russian citizens or if uh, uh, it will be a massacre, bloody massacre of the Russian uh, language people, Russian cultural people in any region. Uh, if so, uh, Russian military could be sent there uh, to protect uh, lives. To protect lives, it's only one uh, uh, possible uh, Russian military uh, involvement in uh, such crisis. So, uh, assume on the basis that none of those things happen, just given what has happened to this point, that would not be enough in any way to involve a military reaction? Uh, if uh, only uh, Russian military uh, can be moved only if uh, this exists and if, uh, by the way, this is supported by Russian uh, public opinion. Because uh, even if uh, some bloodshed uh, exists and uh, victims uh, ask Russian uh, military protection, but if Russian uh, uh, public opinion doesn't support uh, such uh, military involvement, uh, it uh, would uh, not uh, happen, uh, of course. So, uh, so let's, let's yeah, just have a look at the uh, economic situation. I mean, tremendous dependence on gas, as we've seen in a previous time. Um, is there any question of, of Russia using gas to try to change events? Oh, no, it's uh, absolutely uh, no any possibility. Uh, uh, now, the situation uh, is influenced by days. And uh, uh, gas, uh, uh, first of all, uh, has a meaning uh, for the uh, economy, like uh, price uh, and uh, a sell price uh, for the uh, different uh, uh, economic uh, goods. Uh, it's uh, it's matter only in terms of a few months. And of course, it's also impossible uh, for Russia to cut any uh, gas uh, supplying of uh, Ukraine because through the Ukrainian territory, uh, a lot of amount of gas is going to the European Union. And of course, Russia cannot uh, uh, cut uh, its supply to the uh, European Union. It's absolutely uh, out of reality. In the more long term, of course, Russia will uh, uh, streak those discount of the gas price, which is uh, suggested to the uh, Viktor uh, Yanukovych previous uh, government. Uh, but uh, now this gas uh, uh, issue doesn't work. So um, how do Russians feel about Ukraine? I mean, do they, do they feel that, that maybe they, there has now been a loss to Russia of a country that is extremely close historically and, and ethnically in some senses? Of course, uh, 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 Russia doesn't lose Ukraine. Ukraine will sell its neighbor of Russia. And uh, we understand uh, that now some kind of geopolitical uh, games uh, around Ukraine. And of course, these games uh, of uh, geopolitics uh, didn't finish uh, by uh, this uh, uh, revolt, uh, by this uh, revolution. And uh, it will uh, continue. And uh, we think that there are very important basic uh, uh, fact that majority of uh, Ukrainians, uh, they speak Russian language. Uh, if uh, uh, sociologists ask what kind of uh, uh, application form they prefer, 80 percent answer that they want to use Russian language. If you go to the Ukrainian Internet, you can you can find that 80 percent of Ukrainians uh, used uh, Russian language. So it's combination 20 percent. Uh, first of all, uh, Ukrainian language, really uh, Ukrainian uh, language people and 80 percent Russian language. And uh, now we see the coup d'etat when these 20 percent 
try uh, to impose their power to this uh, 80%. And uh, of course, it's impossible to do it by democratic way. That's why uh, these uh, uh, groups, uh, revolutionaries, overthrown uh, democratically elected uh, Ukrainian president. And uh, uh, we, of course, very disappointed by uh, Western uh, attitude, including British attitude. Uh, of course, uh, I don't know, do you know that was that uh, uh, on Maidan, the mostly important leading groups are neo-fascist groups. It was a peaceful Maidan before, uh, uh, before a new year, before uh, exactly, um, uh, exactly uh, January 2nd, when uh, neo-fascists took control over the Maidan. Uh, they made a, a, a big uh, uh, tour light uh, parade in the fascist style. Uh, and uh, they use uh, ZIX, and now these neo-fascist neo groups uh, 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 terrorized their uh, political opponents, as it usually happened with fascists. We are disappointed that British, uh, who uh, uh, was together with us against uh, Nazi Adolf right. Hitler in the World War II, now in fact support this neo-fascist group. We believe that all decisions of Ukrainian parliament now illegal. Uh, because uh, uh, the uh, winners of the coup d'etat used uh, terror uh, to force uh, uh, opposite, uh, opposite, uh, opposite to them uh, polit uh, deputy members of the parliament uh, to vote uh, their uh, members of family captured and they are very much threatened and, and beaten. Of course, it's uh, uh, all decisions right. of this uh, Ukrainian uh, parliament illegal. But let, let, let's just uh, then, if, if what you say is true, then all the chance is that they will return to the Russian fold, that uh, this will fail. If it's only 20% of the country that is represented, then the Russian majority will eventually prevail and they will return to the, to the Russian axis, if you like. Uh, probably, we don't know. We can see in Arabic world that uh, a lot of uh, Arabic language countries nevertheless uh, uh, live a separate life. We will see in uh, South America that a lot of uh, Spanish language uh, uh, countries also uh, uh, have a separate uh, political, cultural and economic life. Uh, same, I think, will be uh, with Ukraine and Russia. Okay. It will be separate, con and Belarus, it will be three uh, Russian uh, language, uh, but separate countries with own uh, history. Right. So let's just look at Mr. Yanukovych. Do, does anybody in Russia know where he is? We don't know where uh, Mr. Yanukovych we think that uh, Mr. Yunkovich made uh, a few tragic mistakes. One, uh, his mistake that he uh, trusted to the neo-fascist bandits. Another mistake that he trusted to the uh, European Union uh, negotiator who just support uh, uh, coup d'etat. Then uh, he made tragic mistake when he uh, give the order to use uh, shooting against uh, uh, demonstrators and uh, finally he made mistake when he uh, ran away from his uh, constitutional responsibility and betrayal his uh, voters and betrayal peaceful citizens of Ukraine who want to be protected from neo-fascist bands. He, who he, now he, he may have made one more mistake, which was obviously to live like a king. I mean, he had a zoo, he had uh, a, a, a two meter high portrait of himself naked. He had uh, luxurious chandeliers and golden taps. And he seems to have lived a life of absolute luxury when many people in, in the Ukraine are extremely poor. Of course, it's also a very big mistake, but you should understand that uh, Viktor Yanukovych made these mistakes already 15 years ago, when he became one of the oligarchs. All Ukrainian oligarchs uh, has uh, such kind of life. All Ukrainian oligarchs has uh, a gold uh, toilet, uh, own zoo, and another such kind of uh, luxury uh, conditions uh, of life. But Mr. Markov, uh, it, sound, it, sounds, it sounds very much that uh, if Mr. Yanukovych now picked up the telephone to call his old friend President Putin, Mr. Putin probably wouldn't be very pleased to hear from him. 
Yes, I think Mr. Putin will, uh, uh, will not uh, answer to the uh, Mr. Yanukovych uh, telephone call. Uh, Sergei, uh, thank you very much indeed for talking to us. Sergei Merkov, thank you very much.